Welcome to Nevertheless Podcast with Bidemi Makmodi, a show dedicated to organic leaders and leaderpreneurs. Today, you would learn how to discover your essence and live more powerfully. Hi, everyone. It's another podcast time. My name is Bidemi Makmodi. This is the Nevertheless Show, a show for organic leaders and leaderpreneurs. And I'm so excited to bring you the series for this month. Because this month I have one of my, in fact, my favorite person on planet Earth, (laughs) who is not related to me by blood, but by covenant, is in the studio with me today. I have my coach, my sister, and my friend, Anna McCoy with us today, and we will be looking at a subject, uh, a subject matter that is really close to her heart and that I'm catching on quickly on because it is the future. If I had to describe my coach amongst many things, I'll say to you, she's a futurist. And so that's why today um, and through this month, our conversation will be around artificial intelligence. How should people of faith deal with this reality of artificial intelligence. But most, more importantly, leaders who are people of faith, how do they get in front of this technology and what do they do with it? Is it true that we'll be replaced by AI? Or is it that there are other things in our lives that would give way to AI? What exactly is this conversation about artificial intelligence? Just to name and define this series, we've called it the Artificial Alpha Intelligence Fusion Series. I know it's a mouthful, but please hear me. Artificial Alpha Intelligence Fusion. The point is that we're taking taking a look at Alpha Intelligence, which has to do with the wisdom of God or divine wisdom and artificial intelligence, which is the formula that man is come up with and we're fusing them for greatness, for our leadership and for exploits. So that's our conversation throughout this month on the Nevertheless Show. Remember, again, it's a show for organic leaders and leader perennials. Hey, Coach. Hey, Sister Biddy Me. How you doing? (laughs) Sister Biddy Me, that's very... That's very... um, yeah, for that's her. every word. <laughs> yes. Hey, my friend, Bit of Me, I am excited to be here with you. Yes. And hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you. Talk to me. Um, one of my favorite quotes, and it's my personal quote, is the quote that says that uh, the human spirit is mm. like the elastic band. Mm. The more you expand it, the stronger it becomes. Something like that. The more it is enlarged, mm-hmm. the more it becomes. And um, when we talk about artificial intelligence yes. and the human mind mm-hmm. and, you know, just the things that we're doing, where does artificial intelligence stand in the scheme of things in the dispensation that we're in? Well, I think now when we think about artificial intelligence, everyone is hearing about it, you know, and it's been around for a very long time. It's not new. Mm -hmm. Uh, But what is new is the availability of generative AI, which Mm -hmm. is its natural language. It's like you and I are speaking now. And so as a result of that, um, it's become available for the average person to be able to use and access it. But we've been using it for a very long time. Mm -hmm. You know, with Amazon, when they refer things to you, that's artificial intelligence. That's algorithms. If you use an Alexa Mm -hmm. or if you use um, a Siri on an Apple device, Mm -hmm. all of that's driven by AI, large language models, Mm -hmm. uh, through algorithms to make predictive you know, suggestions to you. So it's okay, not so new. Let, let me simplify this mm-hmm. because my coach is, did I ever <laughs> tell you how brilliant my coach is? <laughs> She's genius on many levels. I promise you, I cannot lie about yeah. this one. My coach is genius on many levels. You know, I talk about her fondly and a lot on this show. So what Coach has said is that artificial intelligence is not new. Mm-hmm. We've always used it. If you've ever shopped from Amazon, so you buy a pair of sneakers from Amazon 
today. Yes. And the next four weeks, they show you adverts of different sneakers because now they know what you like. Yes. Or you buy a book or you buy jewelry. And then you find that even not even on Facebook these days, mm -hmm. you buy something or you click on someone's a post yes. and read it. Mm -hmm. After a few minutes, you find that every post that that person makes yes. will come to you yes. until they notice you're no longer engaging yes. before they will move on. Yes. So the point is, whether you decide that you're too spiritual for artificial intelligence or not, mm -hmm. if you own a smartphone, you're already using it. Yes. So here's the conversation that I want us to have. Mm -hmm. If you're already using it unconsciously, why not intentionally use it? Well, I believe that people have, especially when we talk about the body of Christ, they have certain belief systems, right, that would discourage them from engaging with artificial intelligence in the way that it's become even more common today. Mm -hmm. And many of them, uh, we've seen all of these things, you know, when we talk about robots or we've seen iRobots, some of these movies, you know, and people are assuming that the AI or the chat GBTs or the, the uh, Google devices or the whatever that that Such area of AI, AI yes. your co-pilots, and these are all names we're becoming introduced to because mm -hmm. they've gone through an iteration over the last two years as it relates to uh, what I call the consumer AI. Mm -hmm. This is where a, a vast majority of us around the world have now now have access. Please just pause that for a moment. Prior to this uh, 2022, yes. we were in the... The manufacturers were the ones that use AI the most. The heads, the yeah. businesses yeah. that you know that needed to collect our data to know how mm -hmm. to quote and unquote, better serve us or at and least sell to us. Yes, sell to us. Yes. They were the ones that were in the forefront of using AI. Yes. Now what it has become with ChatGPT and the rest of them, Open AI and the rest of them, yeah. is they're bringing it to us so that we can now become consumers of it. Yes. Oh, so, and so my question is, mm -hmm. if I already own a smartphone yes. and I have Google locations that I don't even know how to turn off, most of us don't know how to turn off, Right. which means that if I went to a particular place, mm -hmm. then Google has, if I go there frequently, Google will now tell me everything that is available there, you know, mm -hmm. what, where to eat, where mm -hmm. the hotels are mm -hmm. in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. If those already exist yes. and I'm already unconsciously using it, mm -hmm. does it make sense to allow my beliefs, i.e. this is demonization, stop me? Because the way I'm looking at it, you know, since I started to um, just pay attention to it is that if I'm already using it without inviting it, yes, then I might as well take time and study it and use it to my advantage. Oh, absolutely. Because what is happening is that Google and all the rest of them, Amazon and all the rest of them, are using it at my detriment to their advantage. They are using it to tell me what to buy. They are using it to entice me. Mm -hmm. And so I find myself, I go to Amazon to buy one book. I end up buying 16 other items <laughs> that I do not need by the way. Yes. They are profiting by it. Mm -hmm. So it tells me that artificial intelligence has the capacity to turn out a profit for us. Oh, absolutely. If we use it. So yeah. why, what are the mental blocks or the narratives that make it difficult for us to embrace it? That's the question. Well, I think you have to deal with the emotional aspect of mm. AI. Mm. And again, I'll go back to what we've mm. seen. What people have seen are movies where robots are attacking humans. They're mm -hmm. trying to overtake the world. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, you have an image of what artificial intelligence is or a type of artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. But most of us don't have a knowledge of the kind of artificial intelligence that we're talking about today. Yes. We're not talking about the robots. We're not talking about uh, the Transformers, you know, what you see in, in Marvel movies or different things like that. We're talking about tools, tools that can help people 
uh, give birth to their dreams, their visions, their ideas. And if we can help people overcome the emotional aspect or the fear of what they've seen, this is a new introduction to the average person. Yes. When we think about OpenAI and, and their introduction to ChatGPT two years ago, in five days, they had 100 million users. Wow. And the reason why they had 100 million is because there are some uh, distinct things that we all know how, how to do. We know mm -hmm. how to text. Mm -hmm. We know how to communicate. They mm -hmm. took the basic thing that humans do, mm -hmm. and that's language. So that's why it's called natural language processing, where the algorithms or the data behind the scenes is trained on a lot of knowledge. And you can isolate the knowledge. And we've been using AI for a number of years in our financial markets, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. In order to do transactions with your Visa, your MasterCard, your debit cards, then they had to introduce something. They had so much data that they used artificial intelligence or they began to train computers to collect all of that information instantaneously so we could stop cheating them, basically, so people could stop committing fraud. Yes. And so as a result of that, that was one area. Another area that AI has been used is in uh, when we think about uh, x-rays, when we think about cancer, when we think about these things, because these computers, they're just big computers, right? Mm -hmm. And the AI, it takes information in, so they've been able to show it like millions and millions of images of cancer. Mm -hmm. And by being able to do that, because of the processing speed of it, then it could recognize cancer in seconds when it would take a human, like, years to go through files yes. to see if it's yes. something that it's yes. like that. Yes. And so when we're thinking about AI, these are some of the ways that it's helpful. It's helpful when it comes to disasters. Mm -hmm. if, if you experienced in this rainy season here, uh, torrential rains where there was massive flooding and things were wiped away, we could take a Google map from previously a satellite picture from from before that and then take pictures after that and be able to find where people truly are instantaneously. And so those are some of the big picture things when we think about AI. They're using it from, I mean, from a security standpoint. I mean, look at the things that are happening in the world and you could feel one way or the other when it comes to security or we've been with big brothers with cameras all over the place, um, but they, they can use it for good. Right. And they can also use it for evil. So when we think about what we want to talk about today, we're really talking about tools that can help people write. It can help them create images. It can help them uh, do mathematics. Some of the basic things that we do on an intellectual basis, it can help us be more creative people. OK, so two things that I want to highlight. Mm -hmm. Number one, it's a body of knowledge that mm -hmm. has been pulled together and right. processed to, uh, for us, of course, mm -hmm. at the speed of the internet. Yes. So it means that what would have taken me five months to distill or maybe five weeks mm -hmm. or five hours can be given to me in seconds. Yes. So, so effectiveness, efficiency. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a scripture I like to read, and it's in um, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, okay. in the Passion Translation. It talks about us crossing the threshold of true knowledge. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Bible also says that knowledge will increase. And we're in that frame right now when with AI, knowledge is increasing yeah. at a speed that. Mm -hmm. So the Bible has already predicted these things. Yes. So my mindset is if these things can be useful, mm -hmm. then we need to find a way to use them and use them for advantage. Mm -hmm. Because again, I don't want you to forget whether you use them or not, they're being used mm -hmm. on your behalf. Yes. Your banks are using them. The passport office is using them. The photo department is yeah. using them. All of these people are using them. Mm -hmm. You know, when I started podcasting over 10 years ago, mm -hmm. it was because I was somewhere. We had gone for some, it was a platform conference yes, where they told us right. that in a few years, yes. there will soon begin to, cars will be soon begin to be um enabled for Wi-Fi, yes, which means right. that if you have great podcasts, you can people can listen to your podcast on the go. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. That was the singular motivation for me to podcast. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, last week I took a ride in my husband's car. Yes. And his car is Wi-Fi enabled. Mm -hmm. It means that he can actually in real time pull, pull up my podcast mm -hmm. as he's en route somewhere mm -hmm. and begin to listen to me, not yeah. on the phone, even in video format. Yeah. He's able to do that because of the screen that he has in front of his yes. car. Yes. The point is this technology has been deployed for us. Yes. So that's number one. The second thing I want to highlight is the fact that nothing that is available, nothing that God is giving us mm -hmm. is neutral. So when yeah. it comes to knowledge, when it comes to mm -hmm. um, and giftings, when mm -hmm. it comes to talents, when it comes mm -hmm. to capacities, when it comes to the Christian word, power, yes. it is neutral. Yes. So the same way, you, like because you said that AI can be used for positive things mm -hmm. and for negative things. Yes. So it's the human being Absolutely. who decides how they would deploy AI. Yes. So if I decide that I would just use it for the things that would enhance humanity, mm -hmm. it is a tool for me. Yes. If I decide that I would use it to break humanity, it becomes a weapon against God's own. So in the end, AI on its own cannot decide to commit a crime. No. It takes a person who's using AI mm -hmm. to commit a crime. Yes. I mean, this is becoming really real. I want yes. us to go on a break. When mm -hmm. we come back, we'll continue that conversation. Please don't go away. God bless you. Are you seeking to clarify your purpose and profit from it? Then get into Purpose University this year. It's a 10-week e-course for people of faith who seek to clarify their purpose and profit from it. The DNA of Popos has been put together to help you understand what Popos is about and also help you discover what your journey of Popos looks like. Register today at yourpopos.org where Bideni McMurdy would hold your hands so you can discover your Popos and live a more powerful life. In a world filled with many fears and discouragement, life often becomes a burden. For those who know the way, life is just simple. Do not worry, you're not alone on this life's journey, as Bidemi McMordy shares powerful insights and principles from her everyday work and life experiences in her book, Nevertheless. Nevertheless is a book designed to encourage and equip you to face life with courage, hope, and determination. Get a copy of Nevertheless and other books written by Bidemi McMordy, like The Wisdom of the Seed, Honor, The Theology of Work, and so much more from a bookstore nearby or call 080-905-63555 or send an email to bidemy at bidemymacmordy.com to place your order. I guarantee you, you will make it, nevertheless. Welcome back. Before we went on the break, I was telling us that AI was value neutral. That what it meant was that AI was neither negative nor positive. It is the user of AI that decides whether he would deploy it for evil mm -hmm. or for good. Mm -hmm. So in the end, what we have is a tool or a weapon, yes. depending on who is using it. Now, coach, talk to me about um, how... AI impacts on the human mind. You know, mm -hmm. what's the place of the human mind? Does okay, maybe I should rephrase my question and say, do I lose my mind because I now use artificial intelligence? Does my mind become obsolete or not no longer useful because I, I've decided to embrace artificial intelligence? Well, I think what's really important that people have to understand when we think about the human mind and we think about artificial intelligence and how it kind of fuses together. When you think about your human mind, it's there for the purpose of your intellect and your reasoning. It is your seat of wisdom and knowledge. And so using AI is not going to diminish your mindset because here's the thing, whatever goes into AI is kind of what comes out. And there's humans that are actually training or gathering data our knowledge basis for the AI to learn. And so many people think, well, will it replace me? No, it will not replace you, but what will replace you are the other humans that are using AI. 
oh, wow. that are, are going forward in learning this technology, and they're going to replace you with speed, with accuracy, with clarity, things like that, that we may, as a human, actually struggle to do. We might struggle to write an email. We might struggle to write a letter or about a particular subject matter. But with the support of like chat GPTs and some of these types of tools, you're going to excel in the things you do. And so when I think about the human mind and how it relates to artificial intelligence, and I want to take a moment just to give a perspective of the design of AI. So AI is being designed to have intellect, right? But it's not human. It's not a human being. It can't create things on its own. We're sitting behind and we're creating it. And then AI replicates and it reproduces what has been put into it. Like if you had a million books, we couldn't read all the books as a person in a matter of seconds. But by loading all the books in a uh, loading them up, let's just say loading up the files on your computer and your computer has algorithms or has been trained to be able to look at all of those 24 books or 26 books you have written and then spit back information that you wrote. Yes. That is what we're talking about. And that's speed. That's accuracy. That's being able to reason a little bit based on the best possible answer. And so that's what makes it kind of unique okay, so with the here's what human I'm mind and AI. Here's AI. what I'm hearing in the most basic explanation that I can proffer. Mm -hmm. When I started to learn many years ago how to use the computer, yes. here's this expression I'll never forget, mm -hmm. garbage in, garbage out. Yes. So AI would only give us what humans have created yes. and have loaded into the computer or into the systems. Yes. So that's what you're saying. Well, so, I'm, I'm saying that yes and no, because the thing about these, the uh, uh, about the machine learning, the deep neural networks. We have them in our brain. Mm -hmm. And it, what it is, it's like you learn something, maybe you'll, you'll learn something about a piece of fruit, right? And when you look at that piece of fruit and you start peeling an orange, that's just natural. But then there's another part of you that might be curious about just the white, you know, sometimes you can pull the strings off and you're like, oh, well, what you're doing is you're building another level of knowledge yes. on that orange because yes. you can stop it just peeling it and eating it. Mm -hmm. Then there's another part of you that when you open it up, then you pull the skin back and now you're intrigued by the little burst of juices that come out. So, ooh, that's another part of you that actually starts to build a memory and an understanding of what that is. Mm -hmm. Then, oh, then you get to the seed. The seed? Oh, what is that? You build another part of that neural network and they start to work together yes. and the artificial intelligence can now take all that information at once, although the human had to go into it. They had to peel the layer. That's my point. They had to tear That's it apart and all of That's that. That's my so. point. I, I, of course, I know that with artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. it helps, it just puts, brings it together and it yeah. can pull the different elements from the different places and pull them into one place. Yes. But the point I wanted to land, and you have done that excellently, is that these things don't exist in a vacuum. They were created by man and uh, yes. by the human. Yes. And that's why AI can find it. Yes. So AI can't wake up and decide that I have three ears because no. AI cannot generate no. a third ear for me. That's correct. So if AI had to describe me, AI may know things about my inner membrane that uh, the ordinary I may not be able to see. Yes, only because the knowledge was put that's, there. Yes, mm -hmm. but that's because the inner membrane already ex exists. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't exist, AI cannot manufacture it. Well, AI can't manufacture what it hasn't been trained on. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that in order for it to, you, if you all remember when we first started seeing images of AI images of humans, mm. the hands were all messed up. They have 18 fingers, right? 
And the reason for that is that they just didn't have enough data about a lot of different humans mm -hmm. and what a hand looks like. Mm -hmm. So now that data has been trained or those systems have been trained, but they probably have been trained by human eyes. So what that means is that we add a bunch of pictures and then we have a, a person, a human person that will come and click. That's a that's a hand. Five fingers. That's that's the criteria. It's not a dog's paw. It's not something else. It's a hand. So behind all of this stuff in these big language models, we've had humans behind the, the, the systems actually training it. Now we've taken some data, which we also saw where you were having the, the logo imprints or, or marks on pictures when you created one from stock, from this, from, you know, Adobe, why? Because they were able to access all of those images from those different so places. So here's, here's um, something someone watching mm -hmm. may wonder. Mm -hmm. So if this thing is being loaded and pulled from different places by humans, mm -hmm. what if that human decides to manipulate the data? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it means that it's AI cannot call. give me accurate, yes. accurate projections or results, right? Yes, absolutely. And so what happens when the when there's bad data, right? The systems will do what we call hallucinate. So are you seeing this? I this the, all the words I'm saying are similar to the human brain. It's similar to when we don't have all the information, uh, we might hallucinate and what we call lie about certain things, mm -hmm. we call it hallucinating, or when it comes to the AI spitting out information, we call it biases, because again, just as you said, information in, if it's good, it's gonna come out good. And oh. so that's how, when you, I'm, I'm just trying to get people to understand is that it's not a human, mm -hmm. it's not you, right? It's not you, it's not anyone, like, we we have the capacity to imagine and to think and what they've created with the generative art because we have so much data in the world that's number 1 when you start with that foundation all of what all the humans have created now we can take that information and using it and breaking it down into tiny, tiny pixels and then putting those pixels back together. They don't come back together exactly the same if all of us actually did the same prompt and had the same data, it's gonna come back differently because it's not doing what we would do. We would create a picture or something. We would just draw that picture. It doesn't do the same thing. It takes tiny bits of, and pulls it back together again to create an image. So it's 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 quite this, remarkable. Someone will ask me what's the objection of this series. Um, um, what is the goal for this series? The goal for this series is to bring you knowledge and information. Mm -hmm. um, we will present it to you as best as we can, and then you can make the choice and the decision, but at least it will be informed choices and it will be informed decisions. So here's what where I want to close this in this episode until we come next week. It is the fact that artificial intelligence has come to stay. Mm -hmm. That's one. Mm -hmm. Number two, that you've been using it even though you were unconsciously using it. Mm -hmm. Number three, it is not human. It cannot replace you. Mm -hmm. But those who embrace it can are the ones who will get your jobs. Yeah. They are the ones who will move you out of committees. They are the ones who will become more efficient. It's not AI that is replacing you. It's the humans who agree to use AI mm -hmm. that will replace you. It is value neutral. It does not have the capacity to be evil or good. What that means is your computer cannot ask you to take a knife and go kill someone. Right. Unless a human is in the back end and is manipulating the process. So in the end, it comes back to the point that God made us superior. And how we decide to deploy our superiority as humans over every other thing that God created will determine whether AI will serve us or it will punish us. Right. That's well, where we are. And, and I think the first rule of AI, uh, when we think about AI ethics, is simply do no, no harm. harm. Do no harm. 
And just like when we started using computers and laptops, then you started hearing people who hack on the internet, they hack our accounts. There will always be nefarious people who try to do things quickly and for gain. But for the general majority, majority of us that are using these AI tools that can help us in our daily productivity, that's not going to be us. But don't let that make you afraid of not using it. All righty. We've come to the end of the first episode. This is conversation I'm sure you will have to come back to over and over and over. It's been the Nevertheless show. With me in the studio is Anna McCoy, my coach, friend, and sister. And we're dis discussing the fusion between artificial intelligence and alpha intelligence. As, as spiritual beings, what do we do to ensure that we are not replaced by the machines that we think are coming? Um, this and many more will continue this conversation in the next episode. When we come back in the next episode, what I'm going to begin to highlight is the rules. I want to see whether there is any way to um, legislate AI so that, you know, this rule, the cardinal rule of do no harm is adhered to. Mm -hmm. But I think that it also even broadens the horizon for our conversations because it takes us into our legal systems and into our moral systems. Mm -hmm. And those are some of the things we'll discuss in the next episode. It's the Nevertheless show. Remember that I tell you all the time, if you discover your purpose, you will live a powerful life. Now we have tools to even enhance your life even more so that living this life of power is something that is easy for you. Eliminating your tiredness, eliminating your productive time or lack of productive time, just bringing you to a place where your productivity, especially if you choose to use it for good, and that's how I hope you're using it for good, is at its peak in this season. I'll see you next week if Jesus starries. God bless you and bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Nevertheless. For more information and resources, call 0809056355 or send an email to bidemi at bidemimacmordy.com. Don't forget, discovering your purpose helps you live more powerfully.